We're on. We We're are on, on, Penn State fans. We're always on. It's uh, the Blue White Breakdown. I'm Bob Flounders. Dave Jones rocking the Northwestern T. If you're watch, following along on video, if you're just listening in, it's a pretty sweet purple Northwestern T he's wearing. Not as, only that. Not only that. As he records from Downingtown, his dog is in the background. Ooh, and he's got a Northwest. He's got Northwestern basketball uh, shorts on too, and, black and purple. And <laughs> all right. It's not so much the color; it's just it's the it's the white legs that bother me, Dave. It's oh, the, okay, yeah. The pale white, white old, legs. The old uh, man legs. Famous alumni from Northwestern, Julia Louis Dreyfus. I'll just I'll just throw that at you. Why not? Uh, <laughs> Veep. For those who can see, underrated, like, underrated, underrated, underrated as hell. Um, Except everyone says that, and then everyone everyone finds out they they loved Elaine Bennis. like that was their ultimate girlfriend. Yeah, but all those all those fools really I mean they all made a lot of money, but none of them really could do much other than be those guys for the rest of their careers. And yeah, except Julia Louis Dreyfus. Well, Julia's right. the one that's kind of broke through, man. Good for her. You know, there's a movie. Her son played at Northwestern. Yes, yes. And he had uh Harley. a pretty uh active Twitter account for a while. He was a he was a pretty uh who, now what was who's her 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 husband's name? I can't think of his Brad name. Brad Hall. Right, Charlie Hall was his name. The kid. He was on. Uh, he was on Saturday Night Live too. I think that might have been how they met because she actually spent a year or two on Saturday Night Live. Yeah, and she hated it. She couldn't stand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I don't blame her. I don't blame her. Hey, Dave, I covered some AHL hockey last night. The Hershey Bears were in Hershey Giant Center. They played the Rochester Americans or the Am- the Amerks, as the kids call them. Game one of the Eastern Conference Finals. Hershey favored got blowed out 5-1. So uh, I'm going again on Thursday. We're taping this on Wednesday. And it's a must-win game for them at home or it's not looking good for those Hershey Bears. I just wanted you to know that. Thanks. Uh, th- th- there was a bigger story in Rochester, though. <laughs> Did you hear about this? I did. Watch. I'm almost scared to ask you what the big story was. You don't know what it was? I, when did it happen? Over the weekend. Well, I mean, it was, it was pre it was Preakness Saturday, Dave. Oh so my God, you I missed the whole thing. Maybe I did. Maybe I do know about it, but I, I did have the well, I did have the winning horse. At the I missed the whole thing, and so our uh, good buddy Dave Latour had to text me, <laughs> and had said on Sunday, "Are you watching this?" So you don't even know what happened still, right? I don't know what happened, I Dave. I'm just focused it. on my job at Penn Live. Too, maybe you too, should try it. Come too, on. It was like Ron Shelton wrote this, this PGA. Uh, oh, oh, the PGA. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, what well, was a great tournament? I did watch the final round on Sunday. I did saw so the hole in one. I did. What are you deaf? What's what's wrong with you? I, I you you acted like you didn't know what happened. Well, I so thought you, you were talking it. about some kind of world event. I didn't know you were talking about sports. PGA in Rochester. Yeah, yeah. that's a anyway. tough course, by the way. That was a real tough course. Anyway. I missed it. So Michael Black, what the hell? I mean, that was incredible. I don't care about Brooks Kepka. Yeah. What are you, Jeff? Why aren't you watching sports on Sunday? Uh, well, because of Kaiser and because All right. Bob, All right. I had some honeydew stuff, and you know. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. If I don't. Uh, <laughs> You don't want to make her angry, I'll tell you. You run, you be walking around all hangdog all day. You make her angry. Dave, let's get this podcast back on the track. I think it's pretty neat. Penn State is going to play on Black Friday this year. And with the way that the contract things are, are playing out, it could be a night game. It could, because I mean, it could, it could be any, any bunch of things. I'm super excited to be traveling on, on Thanksgiving. But uh, what are you going to do? I didn't have. I mean, why not be in Detroit on Thanksgiving? I think it's a great idea. Do you think? Pen, what do you think James Franklin really thinks about doing this? Do you think he just kind of had to do it, or? I, know, I think. I think. I think. See, I didn't know about this. I knew about the NBC snafu, yeah, and how they agreed to stuff that Fox didn't even know they agreed to. Did you hear about that? <laughs> <laughs> and we're trying to one up each other on stuff we have no clue about. It's pretty. No, funny. I know we're all just. Yeah, I mean, it's something I read. It's like I didn't know that. Wait, should I have read that? I, read that? To say, I don't know. I, I I read it. I read it. I read it. Yeah, they're um, gonna play on Black Friday. And it, at Michigan State, I assume. Uh huh. Great, terrific. 
Well, and you know, the, Iowa and Nebraska almost always play on that day, so I think they could even play at night. You used to love that Nebraska game on Black Friday. I know that was back when Nebraska was good. Back in the Colorado, 19, is that right? In the 19, That's who they played Colorado. Colorado. Yeah, that, that was another big game, and they switched it over to uh, that uh, the always high scoring Nebraska Iowa game. So I, I look forward to watching all those, care, you know, those, those Ferentz moments where the father and the son they team up to score eighteen points by getting three safeties, <laughs> turning an extra point. A uh, blocked extra point and kicking three field goals and beating Nebraska by one point. Well, as for Penn State playing on yeah. Friday, I only think about the one fewer day rest for the players. Yeah. Uh, that's not good. Sure. Um, and it's just, it's going to be part of the future, right? Like, this is the way it's going to be as they move forward. And wait till, wait till they, we, uh... they, have, they have basically hoard out their entire existence yeah. to <laughs> network television to the point where they're not even telling the rival networks that they're in this, this, this deal with exactly what they're doing. And that's what Kevin Warren did. I mean, <laughs> nobody knew. He just got out of Dodge at the right moment, didn't he? <laughs> nobody knew. From Fox that he agreed to them, the yeah, NBC he having a couple this. things before I leave. It was it's been a great two and a half years. We're going to be playing on Tuesdays, alternate Wednesdays, and uh, yeah, he just he just signed away the kitchen store. And nobody uh, from Fox knew that they that he gave away the the <laughs> Big Ten championship game to NBC, and they own majority of the Big Ten network. You know, they <laughs> they probably should know. So there's going to have to be a make good uh, from everybody for for botching that contract, not following the contract. So (laughs) terrific. Yeah. Do you think at some point, like in a couple of years, Kevin Warren might get whacked and like, it'll just be like, they're going to make it look like an act. You can't say stuff like that. All right. All right, people, that's a joke. But I think our (laughs) point is though that there's a lot of unhappy people. Please, Bob. You can't do that. You can't do that anymore. It's like wait, you're suggesting that that it could happen. Like you've got a guy. I am not suggesting that. Right? I have a couple of guys at Harrisburg, sure, but uh, I'm, I'm I have sure just. It's all just. It's I'm all sure just. you do. But but the guy was like hailed as this super genius after that contract, and I never believed that. Like Wiley Coyote. I told you. You know, th- this deal was presented to him by numbers guys from Fox, <laughs> and especially the expansion to use USC and UCLA. That was presented to him. It's not like he <laughs> orchestrated it. Um, so now Tony Petiti has a giant mess to clean up, and Tony P- Petiti is a shrewd TV guy. That's all he is. He's all TV and uh, not much as far as uh, the collegial side to uh, – to 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 sports he was he really doesn't care he's he's a tv guy who knows about contracts so yeah he unearthed all this i'm sure in the first few days of, of his job and was, was doing a wtf over and over <laughs> jim delaney somewhere is out there going Shh. as far as playing on at night in november um you know, they've kind of done that already because it gets dark at 4.30. Yeah, those games, by the time we're done, it's like 7 o'clock at night. Yeah, uh, I don't see that as nearly as big a deal as some people do. Or, or, you know, the, the big deal, I thought, would be if they extended the season during the COVID season into, like, January. That would have yeah. been a big deal. Yeah. Because then you're running the risk of ridiculous temperatures and cold and snow in some of the, the climbs where – you know, in the NFL, they have indoor stadiums in all those places now. Detroit, Minnesota, mm-hmm. <laughs> except Cleveland. <laughs> uh, uh, but but not in, in college football. So it's something you got to consider. Uh, I think they'll be fine with that. Yeah, Dave, and, and let's be honest. Those two teams, <clears throat> those two programs, they'll go anywhere, anytime, any place with the land grant trophy on the line, it means that much to them that they could play it on the moon at midnight and they'll they could, both show up. They could play it in Akron and they'd go to Akron. <laughs> what? They should play it in Akron. That yeah, would be perfect. Wouldn't Joe, wouldn't Joe Moorhead be there? He's Akron, right? 
he'd, he'd do the coin flip. He'd do oh, my God. Flip. It'd be great if he hosted a tailgate. Rubber bowl. If, Rubber if they bowl were done party. and Joe Mort had a tailgate party at his house the day before. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That would be that would be an all-timer How for me. I would love that. Thanksgiving in Akron, Bob? Why the not? Zips. Why not, right? The zips. Hey, as long as... As long as the turkey's cold and the beer is ice warm, I'll I'll be there. I'll be there. You still but, uh, you're st- you're still drinking that Coors Light, are you? I think it's it's the only thing that really I can do at this point is just stay consistent. No, man. you know the stigma with Coors, right? Oh, no, there's a stigma. <laughs> What's the stigma? With the right wingers, they're they're they're. Uh, are you talking about the bank- is you, Are you talking about the banquet beer or a Coors, or the silver bullet? Any Coors, any Coors. Uh, yeah, they're yeah. almost like two different things now. But anyway, um, yeah, so Penn State, <laughs> Ohio State's playing Michigan State in, in uh, November. That's a night game now at, at the shoe. How about that? That has happened before also. Uh, yeah, I, thought, I always thought there were, I know there was, I thought there was that unwritten rule. A that bad luck, A bad luck game 25 years ago this year. Right. Uh, that, that kind of, that was one of those 330, 330 dates, really. And it just generated lost. into a lost night game. game. Big, yeah. big upset loss to Michigan State, uh, November yeah, to 10th or something, 1998. Yeah. yeah, I think, was it Juice Williams, the quarterback? Was it 07? 07, 06, 98, 98, dude. Oh, it uh, was? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 25 years ago. Oh, boy. That is crazy. Well, hopefully Penn State can, uh, if that happens, uh, can – just deal with it. I don't even know if Michigan State's going to be any good this year. They had a couple guys leave the program. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows how tough of a game that'll really be? You know, Peyton Thorne's gone. Peyton Thorne's not walking back through that door, Dave. You're, you, you always have to hop on these quarterbacks that you can't stand. You know, yeah. you, Mertz, Thorne. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so listen, here's what I thought I, we would do here. So the 2023 season, we talk a lot about that, but I thought we'd look at a couple of seasons we might know a little bit about that also ended in the number three, good and bad. Wow. Well, Are you what ready? Comes to mind? What comes now, to mind first? All right. Well, first of all, you wait, you did or you did not cover 93, yes. I no, 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 the 1963 Penn State team. Was that your first year at the Patriot News? I, I think that was supposed to be funny. Your funny man, funny man, Bob Flavers. <laughs> Perdix's favorite funny man, Bob Flavers, <laughs> will be at the Laugh Factory. And <laughs> no, the, actually, the, so the first. In Kane the, this week. First, the first uh, season I wanted to throw out there, neither one of us covered, but 73, right? Undefeated. Hey, the Notable. only, yeah. the, the only, the only Heisman Trophy winner, John Capaletti. John Capaletti. Yeah. Well, you know, I just, I have the, I have the, the little, the little record in front of me. I don't have to look at it. Do you know where they finished in the nation and why? Twelve and zero. Where did they finish? I, I know, I did look it up, so I do know. But this is seventy five. Number five at twelve and zero. <laughs> at twelve and zero. That's because they played a lot of Browns and Yales. Yeah, right? they only played two ranked teams. They they beat yeah. Pitt and they beat LSU in the Orange Bowl, sixteen to nine. But everyone else, yeah. everyone else at Stanford, at Navy, Iowa, Air Force, Army, Syracuse, West Virginia, Maryland, NC State, and Ohio, not Ohio State. It was it was a, a schedule that was not particularly respected <laughs> by the national pundits. So. Uh, and that came after 68 and 69, yeah. which uh, uh, Penn State fans also felt like they were screwed. Right. Um, 70, I believe they went down to Texas and won. Wasn't that the, that 30 to nothing game or something? Something of 30 to 6? That right? was 71. 70, 70 with, in 70, they were 7 and 3. Yeah. Uh, I think they were in a little bit of a reload, a rebuild lost mode. To, lost to Colorado, correct? Out at Colorado, yeah, that yeah, they, that stopped some really long, I think, and that mm-hmm. that set them back again. So they really didn't gain any national respect until Joe's team in '78, which was a hell of a team. Yeah, but they lost to Alabama in the Sugar Bowl on the uh, the infamous uh, Gooman four down goal line stand. Barry Krause, yeah, Marty but, but at least that team stood toe to toe 
with a great Alabama team and really fought. And I think that's where Penn State finally gained the national yeah. respect uh, that that's it had probably deserved before that. But when you play a schedule like 73 was, I mean, that's that's not – well, I mean, look at that schedule. It's not a great schedule. It's not a great schedule. I did notice, though, that it's – I don't know why it's, I should say it's weird, but – John Capaletti is now 70 years old. It's pretty, it's, that's a pretty, that was pretty crazy when I saw that. He's going to be 71 in August. So then we go to um, 1983, 101. Notable. Oh, I know why. I know why you brought all this up. Yeah, you do. (laughs) Let's talk about that kickoff classic. To start the year. Yeah, I knew. I knew. knew. 44 to six. Is that what it was? Right. You know it. I think I might have brought that up. Yeah, 44 to six. They finished eight four and one. They did have still had some good players on that team. How did, how did Nebraska finish that year, Bob? <laughs> hey, I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. Stupid, stupid. <laughs> Thirty one to third. Well, yeah. What, what you would have kicked the extra point? You wouldn't have kicked the extra point. Uh, you know what? I got to give Tom Osborne. I probably wouldn't have. Honestly, I probably would have chickened out and tried. To, I think they would have won the national championship with a tie. Yeah, they would have. It would have been fast. I think uh, you probably would kick the extra point. Would you have? Yeah. Gutless. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the, what's the line in stripes? Gutless. I'll take, <laughs> I'll take my hat off. I'll ta- Warren Oates says, yeah. I'll t- they're in the bathroom. I'll take yeah. my yeah. hat off. Come on. <laughs> I know you want to take a swing at me. Then he doesn't. He's got that. <laughs> Bill Murray's got that grin on his face. He goes, I'd love Gutless. to take you a big swing at you, Charge. Oh, then he goes, punk. Punk. <laughs> Gutless. Warren Oates hits him in the, in the gut and he doubles over. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Was 19, 1983, not really that memorable other than no, no, that no, game. No, no. But 1993, interesting year, right? Springboard, springboard the, year and, the, and that Citrus Bowl performance. First year that, I, that, that we're talking about here that I did cover. That was my third year on the beat. Mm-hmm. And a very interesting year because it was the first year in the Big Ten. Also um, that. Yes. The yeah. Raymond Harris game happened that year. Oh, a lot of weird stuff happened that year. Before that was the uh, the first game, the first road game in the Big Ten. Oh, no, that was the, the next year. So the first game in the Big Ten was Minnesota at home, which was a oh, I knew what happened in 1993 at Iowa game, and that, oh, at God. Iowa. There we go. There we go. So, <laughs> so this is a little story actually. And Jim Jim Carlson calls me. Remember, we used to have a phone. Jim you Carlson was our phone. former assistant sports editor, people. Phone in the press box. Yeah. And then the phone didn't usually ring very often. It was, in, it was so we could call the office. We get a dedicated phone line on the, on, the, on the road because there are no cell phones. It's way before cell phones. It's before the internet. What was your computer like in uh, 1993? I was like the guinea pig for all the G whiz laptops. So oh, okay. I'm sure I had some sort of brand that nobody ever heard of. That the Tandy like, 600 was it the Tandy 600 model? No, or? no, the, none of them were Tandys. They were they were better than all those Radio Shack computers. Okay, so that was good, but they tended to glitch out. In fact, that one froze yeah. in the press box that year at yeah. the end of the year at the uh, no, it was it was the, this it was the December before in uh, Fort Lauderdale. It was a very cold night and the thing that they turned, they didn't have any heat in the press box. Right. The thing actually froze yeah. in the press box and my screen froze and I couldn't do anything about it. Oh, man. I had to really? ride home with Frank Badani to the hotel and have him turn up his heat in the car full blast and, and, and actually held the yeah. computer next to the heater. And when I got into my hotel room, Anna was there, and I'm flipping out because I'm going to miss deadline. I've got no. like two minutes, and yeah. the thing kicked in. The, 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 those things used to have, like, they, they had, like, gears and, and stuff in them. And sure they, hear, weren't, I, they were probably weren't safety hazards. What, was it the, <laughs> I could hear the was thing it going. Was it the Mitsubishi 100? Was it, like, something like that? What was yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a, a think book or one of those things, you know. <laughs> so, so. So didn't I didn't have that flammable one. on the side, a really Something small print. Yeah, it said flammable, radioactive on the side. So you could actually hear the gears going, and it cranked up. And I was going, yes, 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 the hard drive. Uh, so, yeah, 93 also was a big year because that Iowa game 
Yeah. On the on the schedule, it says thirty-one to nothing. It looks like a great win at Kinnick. It's the first offensive trip, juggernaut game. First for trip to Kinnick, but <laughs> that was the year that Saka was benched, and I don't mean Tony Saka. I mean young Saka, young 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 Saka, Johnny huh? Saka, Johnny Saka, and he was benched in the middle of the game, and that was the end for him. He quit the team right mm. after that. And Kerry Collins, who really should have been the quarterback anyway, was the quarterback. But he had had a problem with a broken finger that. <laughs> yeah, I heard some stories. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. That happened in like Lebanon. Volleyball, so some, some weak stuff like that. I, like talked to him, volleyball. I talked to him about five years ago, and he still to this day will not admit it, that it was not a volleyball game. So. And even even Joe admitted it was not a volleyball. Game. You remember that at the press conference? He was like, "I had you guys for a while, didn't I?" You know, just just to, uh, so so we're in this in the middle of this this game, and it's twenty four to nothing. But Penn State's offense does not look good, and I get a call on the phone in the press box, and I, I pick it up, and Jim Carlson's saying. You can't believe this. Jim Vermeil just said on the air Dick that Vermeil. Penn State's Dick Vermeil. Or, or, or what did I say? Jim Vermeil. Why would I say that? Dick Vermeil. Oh. Dick Vermeil just said on the on the on the air with Brent Musburger, Penn State's passing game sucks. <laughs> he said those exact words. And I'm like, what? And you know, I fortunately I was taping the game and I came home and listened to it. And it's kind of in a dead spot in the game in the second half. And he goes, he just can't stand it anymore. He can't take it. You know, this is this is the guy that would would lead the the, the greatest show on turf. What six years later after right. he got back in coaching, mm -hmm. he's going Penn, Penn, Penn State's pass, his passing game sucks. Just right out in the open. And then there's like a dead dead ear where I I heard later that Brent Musburger had to go like <laughs> like this to keep from. <laughs> Keep from the laughing going over the microphone. There's like six or seven seconds of nothing yeah. while the play is going on. I called ABC the moment I got home on Sunday and Maxine Lynch, their <laughs> PR director, actually hooked me up with Dick because he wanted to talk about it. And he wanted to talk about it because he wanted to apologize. Sure. And, and he, he only talked to me. He said, he said I, I felt horrible about it the moment it, it left my... And I said... Why feel horrible about something that's true? He goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> he goes, I really respect Joe uh, yeah. so much. And I, I still, I just wanted to apologize. I, I apologized in person. And I wanted to do it publicly. You know, he's the ni nicest guy in the world. But, he is. Uh, he is. Did he cry on the phone? <laughs> We're winners, Pops. We're winners. <laughs> he's, he's quite a guy. He lives I about, know he is. He lives about 10 miles from me in, he is, in, he out is, in the middle uh, of nowhere in Westchester. And every time I talk to him, it's a blast. So hey, that, was all, hmm? that was also, just real quick, that, that team at the end of the year was no fun to play. Uh, Tennessee got destroyed in that bowl game. And that, no, they didn't really, Bob. I mean, that was, that was Tennessee led that game most of the way. And well, was, I think by the I watched it was the, by the middle of the second quarter. I think I think that uh, Penn State had kind of asserted stuff, and then they just didn't they kill him in the second half. Yeah, but they hadn't asserted themselves until pretty well into the second half. Didn't Dale so, Carter return a punt, or and, I know they had a really good player. I Tennessee. think the, the game that score is forty two seventeen. Is that right? It was thirty one thirteen. Thirty one thirteen. Really? Oh no, you're right. I'm thinking. Yeah, I am right again, Joe. Right. That, that, yeah, I'm thinking of the game in '91 after the okay. at, at the Fiesta Bowl. Sorry, sorry. I got it. Right. That's okay. yeah, right. no, but it did, did look like by him. about 20 minutes into the game, Penn State was going to kill him. Did destroy him. Who was that quarterback for for them? Number five, East Schuler, wasn't it? East Schuler, correct. Yes. Dale was Dale Carter on that team, the corner safety, or was that another team? Man, that's too long ago. That was. It was Phil was, Fulmer and he Schuler, and they got it. Yeah, yeah, they 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 beat them up front to back pretty much in yep. that game. That was yep. a lot a lot like the Auburn game. Um, but but you skipped one. The Michigan State game that year Comeback. at Michigan State was incredible. I mean, I believe they were down twenty points. Uh, what was the final there? I can't remember. Thirty eight, thirty seven. They were down thirty seven, seventeen. Yes. Woo. And it, at the time, it was the biggest quarterback, uh, biggest comeback that Paterno team had ever 
made and it looked it kind of looked over i mean michigan state was scoring almost at will and back then in spartan stadium they uh, you've heard this story before they had fans in the press box yeah i I experienced that early on my penn state uh, yeah with with us troubling And, and they were told not to cheer but they did you know whenever the spartans would do something you'd you'd hear this uh, you know, like under under the, under the tables, and they're they're trying not to, but they are anyway. And the late Jerry Keller, God bless him. Once Penn State got that comeback going and seized the lead, he, 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 we're talking back and forth, knowing the fans can hear us. Mm-hmm. And I I said, Jerry, my God, this must be just an indigestible collapse <laughs> for Michigan State, don't you think? And he's he's going, Dave. I don't know how these fans could could can tolerate this. I mean, some something's got to happen, you know. <laughs> and we're looking around. We can look around and see these people, and they're just they're going. Oh. And they're the people with a lot of money, or they wouldn't oh, have sure. it. a yeah. lot of money who are used to having things go right for them, and not used to having things like this set in front of them. And it was it was <laughs> glorious. It was a lot of fun. Um, and that's where Kerry Collins kind of. Yeah, uh, that was his coming out, man. That that was his coming out party, and he did terrific in that game. I think Bobby Ingram had the winning touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. I, well, I mean, I'm 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 good. I'm not that good. Yeah. You should you should know this. How think, cold was it? Was it was it like typical? Michigan? No, it, it was not like inordinately cold. I don't think November twenty seventh. Yeah, yeah. Um, the the yeah. really cold game was geez. I don't know. I just remember well, it was the only the only time it was sunny in Spartan Stadium ever since we've been there, except it was the temperature was like twelve. Yeah. So you know, you know that's 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 East Lansing for you. Uh, then that bowl game that was a total wipeout. Um, I believe it was. I get those two mixed up: the one against Auburn and the one against Tennessee. Were those both outback bowls? I can't think. Yeah, Auburn, Auburn, no, Auburn was in the uh, Citrus Bowl. Tennessee was the Citrus Bowl, and Auburn was the Outback Bowl. Auburn was in pouring rain. I don't know what the yeah. weather was like for yeah. your Citrus Bowl. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but um, no, the I mean, Orlando game that that Tennessee was really never in it, and they were favored. They were favored in that game. Yeah, they were ranked number six in the country coming in, and Penn State was number thirteen. Dave, let's talk about two more anniversary seasons that are fun to talk about for different reasons. One of my favorite years on the beat, 2003, um, 20 (laughs) years ago. I think one of your favorite years too. Oh my God. Better known as the three and nine season, uh, which was, I mean, as far as lows uh, go. That's low. That's that's one of the all time. That's the nadir of your entire tenure, isn't it? It, I, I would definitely say it was of mine. Well, yeah, I mean, and well, they followed it up with the four and seven, but that three and nine team was whoo. They were they were god awful. They beat Temple at home. They kind of almost had to rally to beat them. Beat Louisiana Tech fifty seven. No, 13. no, they beat Kent State at home. Although no. Kent State had Josh Cribbs, I think. Um, and then they they just they beat Indiana at home fifty two to seven, which oh, was that okay. was not yeah. really that That's didn't really. They were those were all like JV games at yeah. that point, but. They just every every game. Actually, they almost beat Ohio State at home. They lost twenty one twenty. But there were some games in there, Dave, where it just it was such a struggle to watch them play on the offensive side. I, I remember the Jeff Smoker. At Michigan State. They got smashed. Yeah, the Jeff Smoker game at the end of the year. He had a big a big day, and I remember Joe Hermit taking a picture of Damone Jones coming off the field. So just just offensive custom. lemon, yeah. <laughs> just like screaming and yelling at no one in particular. And I was afraid for Joe Hermit's life at that point, but yeah, I mean, he had to document the squalor and that was squalor three and nine. It was as bad a season as Paterno ever had. And pretty soon after the next season, you were asking, uh, didn't you ask Paterno if he deserved to keep his job? Well, they were losing a lot, Dave. And I said, if you continue to lose, do you, do you deserve to be back? And they pretended like he didn't hear the question. And then I <laughs> come up to repeat it. And then he's like, nah, he just was. He was um, a good question. 
a but valid so, uh, question. The one good thing about 2003, though, was in that Michigan State game, they played a true freshman linebacker by the name of Paul Puzlozny because – they were like, you know, uh, we gotta, it's, we gotta, we gotta get. Some, we like some of these guys; they're better than the guys we have. We gotta get them on the field, and you know, that was the first time I remember seeing Paul out there, not quite ready yet, but he got ready in a hurry, even starting in two thousand and four. He was. I, when I think of you asking Paterna that question, I remember the backlash you got nationally from Trevor, Trevor Maddich. <laughs> He accused me of floundering around. I was like, ah, well, you got me there, Trevor. Clever. <laughs> you got me there. Um, <laughs> um, hey, Dave, I, we're running. It's we're, we're at the 30-minute mark. I still think you're going to appreciate this. I will always remember 2013 for oh, a variety of reasons. Wisconsin game. Yeah, the, yeah, the Wisconsin game, the, the, coaching, search, the coaching searches, oh, but God. also Billy O'Brien's last year – Christian Hackenberg's first year and that Wisconsin game when they were like 25 point underdogs and the they beat us. They controlled the game from the start. Yeah. And then he was just waiting on us all to come into the press room afterwards. And he just glared at us. And you actually asked him uh, something of our, you said, you know, we all thought you were going to lose really bad. He's like, yeah, Dave, I know. <laughs> I don't remember that. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah. yeah. But that was, an, that was a pretty incredible game. And it really showcased what Bill could do. Um, again, if he knew he had a defensive coordinator, he could flummox. It didn't really matter if that team, the other team was a lot more talented than Penn State. He could exit OM so bad that they wouldn't even know what hit them. And they, they could steal some wins. And he did that at Wisconsin, I thought. That yeah, and, and that was also the year where um... – Ron Vanderlinden was released from the staff uh, a couple of days after that game. And that was the genesis of when I started hounding OB. And I would I talked to him all the way out to a pit basketball game and back with Dick Girardi. We dro drove out to the Penn mm -hmm. State at pit game. Uh, I think it was December 3rd and then drove back on December 4th. Uh, we actually yeah. visited the Flight 94 Museum uh, grounds that that day out in the middle of nowhere in Western PA. And that's that was the day that OB called me back and we had the infamous conversation. It was a was there a broken windshield or yeah, a threat yeah, of a broken windshield, to, David? I was about to put my fist through this windshield, even <laughs> talking about it. I said, and, and he began it with, you can print this, you can print this. And and I knew if I printed what he said, I knew I was provoking him, first of all. And he was a combustible guy. I mean, he's like I am. He has a he's hot temper. And I knew when you provoke somebody like that, it's really not a fair, it's really not fair. Right. I think he probably mostly decided he was out the door, but hadn't <laughs> completely. And that yeah. was that was his decision. That was his decision to make. Yeah. And I it, had I printed all the stuff he told me I could print right then on December 4th, mm -hmm. he would have had to leave. He would have had to leave. And I yeah. said, you don't want me to print that. And yeah. I did him a solid right then. I really mm -hmm. did because I could have. I mean, he actually told me to print it. And that was the, the thing about all the Paterno people and all that. Didn't, wasn't the term Joe Bots? Was that, did that, did that take flight after I'm that? I'm not sure. I, the Joe Bots had generated earlier that okay. year, but, but okay. uh, that was the, the idea that he was I just gotcha. sick to death of all the questioning and that no one was rowing the boat in the same direction. And there's still a little fragments of that and, and <laughs> the NIL uh, accurement and all that stuff uh -huh. going on now, but that, yeah. that but it was much, much worse back then. And he had to fade that heat, as our old Nick, Nick, old boss Nick Horvath used to say. And it was not pleasurable for him. So a month later, he, four weeks later, he really was out the door on New Year's Day, uh, January 1, 14, out the door to Houston. And that's when the James Franklin era began. Right. So do you see what I'm glad we, we talked about these anniversary seasons because there is a tie in to. James Franklin and this 2023 season could go a, a number of different ways, but I guess what I'm trying to get at with you, Dave, is no matter what happens this year, it ends in a three. So something wacky is going to happen. We just don't know what it is. Nine and three. 
<laughs> it could be a it could be the closest to 93 with a little toss of 1973 in there. I don't know. We'll see. You tell me. I don't, I don't know. think it's going to be an 83 or a do- or 2003 if or less. No three. Yeah, we're, we're everyone's going to have a lot of work to do in January. All, All right. right, that was a good one, and maybe that's a column. Maybe that's a column. Yeah. Well, I want. I would like a nice little. I would nice uh, a nice Not little. A yeah. Copyright? No. What? Are, what do they call it? Like, uh, what do they when they roll the credit. credits in movies? You get a credit. You get a credit. What do they call it when they roll the credits in movies? You get like some kind of like a was an executive producer. Special no. thanks. Yes. Special thanks. Thanks. Yes. yes. Yeah. I, I would like extra special thanks when you write this column. <laughs> All right, Dave. I'll let you get out of here. Have a uh, have a good weekend. Stay good out work, of here. Bob. I mean. To to think up all these ideas, that was good work. Actually, that was uh, that was that was interesting stuff. I know. Well, that's ha- one, every once in a while. I don't dr- I don't drink Coors Light on Tuesday nights to prep for a Wednesday podcast. <laughs> By and the way, everyone, the result, is, the result is near genius. So you're going on vacation now. You know, where are you going to go? Uh, you going to go somewhere? Uh, staycation, vacation. The first week will be a little bit of a staycation, and I might branch out uh, after that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna line up a couple of guests. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, tout that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not going to tout it yet because they're not absolutely solid. But they're going to be people that that uh, yeah. uh, that talk to some people and uh, that that are Insight. very well versed in, good. in the national scene. Put it that way. I love it, Dave. All right, have a good weekend. I'll, we'll talk soon. You have the a great white, vacation. The blue white breakdown. We'll be back at some point with a lot of special stuff because it's 2023 and weird stuff happens when years end in a time.